Football is a violent sport, which is what makes evaluating players still in high school so difficult. With how prevalent injuries are at all levels, it's tough to predict who will actually make it to the NFL. That's what makes things like the USA Today All-USA High School Football Team so intriguing. These young men were among the best of the best, but many of them never found NFL greatness. Today, we're taking a look back at the 1986 USA Today All-USA team and seeing what happened to all 24 players, starting with the offense. Emmett Smith, running back. Let's be honest, if you've been watching these videos, you know who Emmett Smith is. Here's the tale of the tape. Three-time Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl 28 MVP, 1993 MVP, 1990 Offensive Rookie of the Year, four-time first-team All-Pro, eight-time Pro Bowl nod, four-time rushing yards leader, three-time rushing touchdowns leader, holds a record for career rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, and attempts. In short, Smith is a legend who played on one of the more dominant offenses of the 90s alongside Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin. I could spend the whole video talking about him, but there are longer, probably better career breakdowns out there you can seek out. The Hall of Famer is one of the best to lace him up, even if my Oklahoma State bias says Barry Sanders was the better player. Since retiring in 2004, Smith has spent some time in broadcasting and become something of a real estate mogul. His son EJ will play his graduate senior season of football at Texas A&M in 2024 after four years at Stanford. Mickey Joseph, quarterback. Joseph made his way to Nebraska for his college career, where he backed up Steve Taylor and Gary Godowski during his first two seasons. As a junior, Joseph was the starter, but split time with Mike Grant. The team went 9-3, but Joseph went down with a season-ending injury in the regular season finale against OU. The Cornhuskers would go on to lose to Georgia Tech in the Citrus Bowl without their lead quarterback. Coming back from the leg injury, Joseph fell behind Keith McCant on the depth chart and played sparingly. The 5'10 signal caller signed with the Hamilton Tiger Cats to play in the Canadian League in 1991, but he ultimately skipped pro ball due to his injury and instead started coaching. He's worked his way up the ranks in the decade since and started as the head coach at Grambling State in 2024 after spending a year working as the interim head coach at Nebraska in 2022. Darren Lewis, running back. Lewis starred at Dallas football powerhouse Carter High School, and some called him the best player in his class. He'd stay in-state and head to Texas A&M for college ball. As a freshman, he ran for nearly 700 yards and eight touchdowns while splitting carries. That year against TCU, he ran for 194 yards, showing the world that he was a force to be reckoned with. As a sophomore, he ran for 1,692 yards, which was an Aggies record until Travion Williams broke it in 2018. It would have led the country that year, but there was this guy named Barry Sanders who had about a thousand more yards in 88. Next year, his yardage went down to 961 as Robert Wilson ate into his carries, but Lewis came back in 1990 and ran for 1,691 yards and 18 TDs. That year, he would pick up his second All-American nod and ended his career as the fifth all-time leading rusher in NCAA history. As of 2024, he's dropped to 15th, but that's still a strong showing for Lewis. Unfortunately, he tested positive for cocaine at the scouting combine and fell to the sixth round in the 91 draft. The Bears picked him up and he played there for a few years, but he continued to have legal troubles and was eventually cut after racking up only 431 rushing yards in 33 career games. Sadly, he would continue to struggle with a cocaine addiction and suffered greatly because of it. In 2012, he was sentenced to a 27-year prison term after pleading guilty to three charges related to armed robberies. Lewis passed away after a fight with cancer in 2024. Ricky Waters, running back. Waters was a highly touted recruit and made his way to Notre Dame. During his first season, he mostly backed up Mark Green, but he still ran for nearly 400 yards. In 88, the Irish's Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown had moved to the NFL, so coach Lou Holtz moved Waters to the flanker position. He led the team in receiving yards that year, and the team won a national championship. The next year, Tony Brooks was suspended for the season with academic issues, so Waters moved back to running back. He excelled, rushing for nearly 800 yards and 10 touchdowns while still being a receiving threat. Waters' numbers went down slightly as a senior, but he was still selected in the second round of the 91 draft by the 49ers. He quickly became a stud in San Francisco, rushing for over 1,000 yards as a rookie. He won a title with the team in 94 before signing with the Eagles as a free agent in 95. He also spent some time with the Seahawks toward the end of a productive career that saw him make five Pro Bowls and rush for over 1,000 yards in seven of his 10 seasons. Since hanging him up, Running Waters has acted in films like Any Given Sunday and is working as a motivational speaker as of 2024, where he talks to kids who, like himself, have been adopted. 
The multi-talented former star is also a recording artist, music producer, and published author, and even works as the head football coach for Oak Ridge High School in the 2010s. Kelvin Hankins Offensive Line It looks like Hankins went to Clemson for college ball, but he didn't see the field much during his time there. Reportedly, he could bench press over 350 pounds in high school, but that's pretty much all I could find in my search, so if you have further information, share it below. Greg Skrepnak, Offensive Line Skrepnak took his talents to Michigan for college ball and was a consistent starter for the Wolverines. In 1990, he made the All-American team, and in 91, he made the team again while also winning Big Ten Offensive Lineman of the Year. He was then selected in the second round by the Raiders in the 92 draft. The 6'6", 300-pounder was injured during the preseason, setting back his development. He finally made it in the Raiders' starting lineup in 94, but his game never quite translated to the NFL. He'd finish out his career with two seasons in Carolina before retiring in 98. Relatively soon after, he'd enter the political world, working in local politics in Pennsylvania. However, a 2009 corruption scandal forced him to resign. In 2010, he was sentenced to 24 months in federal prison. Since getting out, he's been working for a law firm. Dean Dingman, Offensive Line Dingman made his way to Michigan for college ball and became just the third true freshman to start on the Wolverines' offensive line. By the end of his storied career with the Big Blue, Dingman was a two-time All-American and two-time All-Big Ten selection. He was then selected by the Steelers in the eighth round of the 91 draft, but placed on the IR before the season started and was out of the NFL. It looks like he got into coaching at the high school level soon after, but I've been unable to track down information more current than 2001. Brian Kelly, Offensive Line Kelly made the USA Today roster as an offensive lineman, but switched to defensive tackle during his time at UCLA. I wasn't able to find a ton of information about Kelly's career, but it looks like he was relatively solid when healthy. Unfortunately, he did pick up a few injuries during his time with the Bruins, which may have hindered his development. Ultimately, it doesn't look like he played pro ball, though I've been unable to find out anything about his life after 1991. Greg Lakin, Offensive Line Again, not a ton of info out there for this guy. It looks like he played for Texas A&M for a few years, but didn't leave a massive mark on the program. If you know more, please share it below. A LinkedIn profile that appears to be him says that he's been working in the financial world for several major companies since graduating in 1992. Nate Turner, wide receiver. Turner made his way to Nebraska for college ball, a national powerhouse at the time. Turner spent time at both receiver and running back for the Cornhuskers and was selected by the Bills in the sixth round of the 92 draft. He switched positions again, this time playing tight end for Buffalo in 93 and 94. Turner then signed with Carolina for the 95 season before leaving the NFL behind. Reportedly, he switched sports and represented the United States at the 1997 World Sevens Rugby Tournament. However, I've been unable to verify that info. It looks like he is now running football camps back in Chicago. Johnny Walker, wide receiver. Unfortunately, we aren't talking about the famed whiskey maker. Instead, Walker stayed in-state and played his college ball at Texas. Over his four-year career, the wideout pulled in 114 catches for 1,567 yards and four touchdowns, creating a deadly trio alongside twins Carey and Keith Cash in 1990. Walker was selected by the Packers in the eighth round of the 91 draft, but it doesn't look like he played in the NFL. I've been unable to find out what he's been doing since hanging him up, so if you know more, please share it below. Philip Doyle, kicker. Doyle set the record for most field goals kicked in high school before signing to play with the Alabama Crimson Tide. He was the starting kicker for the team all four years of his collegiate career, setting several records along the way, including kicking six field goals in a single game against the Southwestern Louisiana Raging Cajuns in 1990. That year, he was also a unanimous selection for the All-American squad after making the second team in 89. Doyle went undrafted in 91, but he did sign with the Giants. He successfully kicked two field goals in the preseason, but was cut before the season started. Doyle then spent one season in the World League of American Football before finishing his playing career. I haven't found out anything about his post-playing career, so if you know anything, sound off below. And now, for the defense. Mark Spindler, Defensive Line the 6'5 Spindler went to Pitt for college ball and set a team record with 106 tackles as a true freshman. He missed most of the next year with a knee injury, but led the team in tackles as a junior. He was named a second team All-American that season and decided to head to the draft with a year of eligibility remaining. The Lions selected him in the third round and he played for the team for five seasons. He was a relatively solid defensive end during those years, starting nearly every game he was healthy for. In 95, he was playing for the Jets, but an ankle injury the previous season had sapped him of a lot of his athleticism, and he became more of a rotation player in New York. 
By 97, he was back with the Lions. He played there for two more seasons and then retired. He would then jump into the broadcasting world in Detroit. After 2005, he left that world behind and eventually made his way into hearing aid sales where he was working as of 2012. Alfred Williams' defensive line. Big Al went to play for Colorado, quickly becoming a star. He made the All Big 18 three times, winning Big 8 Defensive Player of the Year in 89 and 90. He was also an All-American in both seasons and won the Butkus Award in 1990 as a top linebacker in the country. That year, Colorado won a national title with Big Al as a captain. After accomplishing nearly everything possible, Williams went to the 91 NFL Draft, where the Bengals selected him 18th overall. The Condor spent four years in Cincinnati and one year in San Francisco. In 96, he joined the Denver Broncos and started to play the best football of his professional career. That year, he registered a career-high 13 sacks and was named to the All-Pro and Pro Bowl rosters. The next year, he'd help lead the Broncos to a Super Bowl title, and he'd do it again in 98. Williams then retired after the 99 season and has been working and broadcasting for the last few decades. David Rocker, Defensive Line Rocker was a standout defensive tackle during his time at Auburn, making two All-SEC rosters in 89 and 90, and picking up a consensus All-American nod in 1990. For that, he was selected in the fourth round of the 91 draft by the Rams. He played with the team for four seasons, but was injured for most of the first two. That kept him from really developing, and he only started four NFL games before leaving his playing career behind after the 94 season. He would eventually make his way into coaching, most notably working as the head coach at Point University in Georgia from 2013 to 2014. John Johnson, Defensive Line Johnson played his college ball at Clemson. It's tough to find exact stats, but those Clemson defenses in 89 and 90 were filled with all ACC players, including Johnson. Alongside guys like LaVon Kirkland, Doug Brewster, Vance Hammond, and Dexter Davis, Johnson led Clemson to several 10-win seasons. He was then selected in the third round of the 91 draft by the 49ers. He played in San Francisco for three seasons, starting 12 games in 93, and then joined the Bengals in 94. He played one last season with the Saints in 95 before leaving the NFL. Reportedly, he's back in his hometown and potentially owns a photography shop as of 2016. Stacy Dillard, Defensive Line Dillard left Texas to play for the Oklahoma Sooners. As with many defensive players of this era, it's tough to find any concrete stats about the nose tackle, but he did make second team all big eight in 1991. After that, the Giants selected him in the sixth round of the 92 draft. He played for the team for four seasons, starting 19 of his career 59 games and recording 5.5 career sacks. He retired after the 95 season and was working as an athletic director for a Texas high school as of 2024. Matt Darby, Linebacker Darby moved across the country to attend UCLA for college ball. Over his four years with the school, he turned himself into a star safety. In 91, he was named a first-team All-American, and he headed straight to the NFL Draft. The 6'2 hard hitter was picked in the fifth round by the Bills. He was a rotation player during his first two seasons before starting every game in 94. He snagged four picks that season to set a career high. Unfortunately, it looks like an injury held him to only seven games in the next season, and then he joined the Cardinals for 96 and 97 to end his career. I'm not 100% sure what he's up to these days, but I've been watching his hit against Nebraska in 88 on repeat since starting this write-up. Sean Howard, Linebacker I wasn't able to track down much about Howard's playing career. He did attend UCLA alongside Darby and Kelly, but I didn't find any stats from his time there. What I do know is that he would go on to earn his law degree from Oregon. Howard then spent a few years working in law before joining several NFL front offices. Following that run, Howard has spent the last several years working as an NFL agent. Pat Stant, Linebacker Stant went to Tulane for college ball and played there for all four years. As always, defensive stats are tough to come by, but it looks like he did nab two interceptions during his career. Reportedly, he spent some time on the Saints training camp squad after college, but didn't make an NFL roster. It looks like he then went into marine transportation and logistics back in Louisiana. Corey Booker, defensive back. Booker played college ball alongside Ed McCaffrey at Stanford. Despite making this team as a defensive back, he transitioned to tight end and made the Pac-10 all-academic team. He was also elected senior class president, potentially a sign of things to come. Booker would then earn his BA in political science and his MA in sociology. Then, he accepted a Rhodes Scholarship to study at the Queen's College in Oxford. Booker went on to get his JD from Yale and started working in politics soon after. By 2006, he won the race to be the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. He worked in that position for two terms before setting his sights on the U.S. Senate. 
He won the 2014 election over Jeff Bell and won re-election in 2020, and as of 2024 will soon be the senior senator from New Jersey. Leroy Thompson, defensive back. While Thompson made the list as a DB, he was also a star running back in high school, rushing for nearly 2,000 yards and 35 touchdowns as a senior. He elected to go to Penn State for college and played running back for the school. His freshman season was marred by a hand injury, making it a mostly lost season. He'd come back relatively strong as a sophomore, rushing for 401 yards and three touchdowns on 108 carries as former starter Blair Thomas missed the full season. Thomas came back in 89 and ran for over 1,300 yards, relegating Thompson to fullback duty. As a senior, Thompson was again the team's leading rusher, churning up nearly 600 yards to go with his eight touchdowns. In the 91 draft, the Steelers selected him in the sixth round. He was mostly a backup during his six-year NFL career, but Thompson did carve out a few solid seasons. He wrapped it up in 96 with career totals of 1,390 yards and six touchdowns. In the years since, it looks like he's been working with several different nonprofits back in Knoxville. Lewis Reddick, defensive back. Reddick played college ball at Pitt, where he spent time at both running back and DB. The latter would end up being his best position, and he was selected by the 49ers in the ninth round of the 91 NFL Draft. He didn't make the final roster and spent a year playing with the Sacramento Surge before the Falcons brought him in. Riddick started four games for Atlanta in 92 and then signed with the Browns for three seasons. He'd spend another year in Atlanta before playing his final season in Oakland in 98. While never a consistent starter, he was a relatively solid rotation player. After retiring, he'd spend time as a scout for Washington and Philadelphia while also working in player personnel for both teams. He left that position behind in 2013 and has entered the broadcasting world. Josh Butland, punter. Butland went to Michigan State and seems to have been a relatively solid punter. Over his four-year career, he averaged just under 41 yards per punt and even had a single rush in 1989 for 31 yards. Interestingly, he also played offensive line in high school, but it doesn't appear that the six foot six punter continued to do so in college. He also doesn't appear to have made an NFL roster, and I haven't been able to find any further info about his post-playing career. As always, if you know more, share it below.